Today in this 2010 Toyota Highlander, we're going to install the Deconcha P3 brake controller, part number 90195. To install this brake controller, we'll also be using the ETB C7 kit and a tow ready universal mounting bracket, part number 18136. First, I'm going to install my seven pole bracket that comes in my kit with the universal mounting bracket. Next, we'll go ahead and put our bracket on the hitch. Once I have my bracket attached, I'll just use a pair of tin snips to cut off the excess from the band. Now that we've got our seven pole bracket and universal mounting bracket attached to the hitch, we'll go ahead and install our seven pole connector. We'll just use the fasteners that are provided in the install kit to attach it. With our seven pole mounted, we're gonna go ahead and get inside the vehicle because we need to route the four pole connector outside to our seven pole connector. Go ahead and remove the spare tire tool door and the side panel. We need to remove the driver's side cargo tray so that we can route our four pole connector outside the vehicle. We got one push pin fastener we'll have to remove and two screws. Now we'll go ahead and work the tray out. You can see it routes us over to our four pole connector connection point. This is also gonna give us access to a grommet so that we can route our wire outside the vehicle. We'll go ahead and remove the grommet. Make sure my four pole connector will fit through the hole that's provided. I'll go ahead and feed my wire underneath the vehicle. Then I'm gonna take a couple of the provided black zip ties and secure the wiring to the manufacturer's wiring, keeping it out of the way so that we can reinstall our cargo tray. With my four pole connector in place, I'm gonna use a pair of cutters and actually cut the grommet so that I can slip it around the four pole connector and reinstall the grommet. That'll give us ample room to slide our four pole connector in it and reinstall the grommet. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our interior. Now we can take our four pole connector that we routed underneath the vehicle and run it over to the seven pole connector and make our connection. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take some black tape and wrap up my wires. I'm gonna go ahead and take the purple wire that comes from our seven pole connector and wrap it up also. The purple wire is for the reverse lights that will not be hooked up in this application. Since we'll be making a connection with our four pole, we won't need the plug cap, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. With the connection made, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little more black tape and wrap up my connection point. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make our ground connection. It'll be the white wire with the ring terminal already attached. We'll go ahead and route it here, up under the fascia, and then we're gonna go directly to the frame. And to attach it, we'll use a self-tapping screw that came in the install kit. All right, with my ground screw attached, we need to go ahead and prepare our duplex cable to attach to our blue and black wires. I'll go ahead and cut back the shielding on the duplex wire, and then we'll strip it back so that we can make our connection with the butt connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and connect black to black, and then the white to blue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take some black tape and tape up each one of my connectors, and then the wires themselves together. Now that our wires are secured, we can go ahead and take the rest of our duplex wire and run it up to the engine compartment. When routing your wire, you want to be careful to stay away from any moving components, such as the suspension or steering, or excessive heat, such as the exhaust. With our wire pulled up into the engine compartment, I'll now go ahead and pull it through and up to the battery. Using one of my zip ties, I can go ahead and attach it here directly to the manufacturer's harness. Now that we've got our gray duplex wire routed under the hood and secured, I'm gonna leave it there and go into the cab of the vehicle. We're gonna mount our brake controller and start making connections with our brake control wires. First thing I need to do is locate where the brake signal wire is. I've gone ahead and pulled it out of the loom so that you can see that the blue wire that comes off the brake switch is our brake signal wire. It'll be connected to the red wire that'll come out of our brake controller. Our white wire will go to the negative side of the battery for a ground. Our black wire will go into the engine compartment to a breaker and then to the battery for power supply. And our blue wire is the one that will connect to the blue wire that comes out of our seven pole connector in the rear of the vehicle. Now all we need to do is locate an access hole that we can route our wires from the engine compartment into the cab of the vehicle and from the cab of the vehicle into the engine compartment. With this particular vehicle, the entire firewall is covered with a insulation. So what we're going to have to do is pull back the carpeting, take my utility knife, and cut the insulation back so that I can gain access to the firewall. 
With the carpet and insulation peeled back, I've located a spot that's under the brake booster and next to the steering shaft where we can come out through the firewall. Now that we've got our hole drilled in the firewall, we're ready to start running wires. But before I can do that, I need to go ahead and mount my brake controller. We're gonna go here next to the airbag, but staying far enough away from it not to get in the way. We'll also be just below the coin holder so that we won't interfere with the door operation. Let's go ahead and mount the brake controller now. With our brake control mounted, our hole in the firewall will tell us where we're gonna lead our wires from the engine compartment to the cab of the vehicle. Let's go back into the engine compartment where we'll ride our wire through the firewall. So now what I do is strip our wire back so we can route the white wire into the cab of the vehicle and the black wire to our breaker. Be careful when stripping the wire back because you don't want to cut into the black or the white wire and cause any damage to them. Now what I'll do is go ahead and just cut off the extra. Now we can take our white wire and run it into the engine compartment. To get my white wire into the cab of the vehicle, what I'm going to use is a piece of air tube for a pull wire and run it from inside to outside, make a connection with the white wire using some black electrical tape and then pulling it into the cab of the vehicle. Now we'll take the remaining piece from our duplex wire and route it into the engine compartment. In this case, we have to make sure that we have enough to pull through and route over to the negative battery cable. Now that we've got all our wiring into the cab of the vehicle, we can go ahead and start making some connections. I'll go ahead and prep my duplex wire first. With that completed, I'm gonna go ahead and take my black electrical tape, tape up the three wires past the butt connectors. Then we'll make our connection with the brake signal coming from the brake switch. We're using our quick heat connector. Now we can go ahead and take our wires, route it underneath the insulation, the carpeting, I use a black zip tie to secure it here. Then we'll follow the manufacturer's wiring up underneath the dash and to our brake controller where we'll go ahead and make our connection. Next, we'll go ahead and take the duplex wire that we ran from the brake controller, strip back the cover because our power is going to go through a breaker before it goes to the battery. And the ground can go directly to the battery after we add a ring terminal. Now, I want to go ahead and mount my breakers. We got a 40 amp breaker and a 30 amp breaker, and I need to mount them so that we can route our power wires to them. Here below the windshield wiper cowling will be a perfect location. There's our 40 amp breaker. Next, I'll do our 30 amp breaker. Keeping in mind that the copper side of the breaker is the side that'll go directly to the battery. Now what I'll do is go ahead and line up my power wire that's gonna go to the brake controller Cut off the extra, strip it back, add a ring terminal, and connect it to my breaker. Next, I'll repeat the same process for the power wire that goes to our seven pole connector. With that done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the ground wire that we're gonna run to the battery from the brake controller, route it over following the manufacturer's wiring so that we stay out of the way so we can connect it to the battery. With my wire routed over to the battery, I'll make my connection at the same time when I make my power connections that come from the breakers. So let's go ahead and route our wires to the breakers and make up some terminal ends. Then I'll make my power wire connections and then my ground wire. With all our battery connections made, that completes the installation of our Takancha P3 brake controller, part number 90195, the ETBC7 kit, and our Tow Ready Universal Mounting Bracket, part number 18136.